Adesso passiamo la parola all'amico e collega Neil Harris, Università di Udine. Anche lui lo presento poco perché è chi è certamente... Anzi, non vuole essere presentato da me, ecco, se no userei le parole che ho usato una ventina d'anni fa per presentarlo e vorrei evitarle. Eh, ehm, allora, il suo intervento è Cost We Don't Think About, Rubrication and Illumination, an Unusual Copy of Franciscus de Platea, Opus Restitutionem, 1474. Forse di... okay. Grazie a tutti, a uh, Cristina per l'organizzazione in cui ha fatto la cosa migliore possibile, cioè non mi ha minimamente coinvolto. Uh, e quindi questa è testimonianza all'efficacia della manifestazione. Allora, uh, come mi, mi puoi dare l'aggeggio Mario? Vai. Dunque... Allora, Cristina ci ha appena data una sintesi dei dati che si trovano, soprattutto i prezzi, in questo documento straordinario che è il giornale di Francesco De Madis. E devo dire che la mia illustre collega, professore of the European Printed Heritage, non, non si capisce cosa sia sta roba, ma ce lo spiegherà all'Università di Oxford, ci ha dato una visione totalmente fuorviante dei prezzi. Va bene? Perché non ha menzionato gli extra. Non ha menzionato gli extra. Io non so quanti di voi, ma probabilmente un buon numero di voi siete giunti qui con i nostri valenti amici, assistenti, le persone che ci aiutano di più nella ricerca scientifica, cioè la Ryanair. Cioè quel bel volo, Stansted Treviso, sul sito, loro sanno molto di extra. Cioè voi vedete il biglietto 25 euro. Aprite, cominciate l'acquisto. Volete salire prima degli altri, ed, degli altri ed occupare tutto lo spazio con i, le vostre valigie? Clic, 5 euro. Volete una sedia il più lontano possibile da bambini urlanti? Clic, 5 euro. Volete portare la borsa con... Uh, sorry, I've switched into Italian. Didn't notice that. Am I giving this in English or Italian? No okay, I'll give it in English. Apologies. <laughs> uh, apologies. I got distracted. Um, do you want to take your lipstick case on? Click cinque euros. Very quickly, your 25 euros becomes 50. That's what extras are about. And this is what the Giornale of Francesco De Mardis doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us about extras, or very little about extras. But we have to gather our information from somewhere else. Now, the book I want to talk about today is by this gentleman here, Francesco De Platea, in the 15th century. The moment he crosses over into the 16th century, he becomes a banale Francesco Piazza. Life is so unfair. Life, not much is known about him. He's a theologian, he's a Franciscan, he's professor of canon law at Bologna from 1428, so I think we can assume he's born somewhere in the decade between 1490 and 1500, and we know he dies in 1460, possibly at quite a ripe old age. It's so sad, professors get prof forgotten. Right, his main work published work, the one by which we know him, is the Opus Restitutionum Usarum Excommunicationum. It's an absolute thriller of a text. Uh, contemporary reviewers said we couldn't put the book down, right? And if anybody is thinking that I am here and I'm going to do a critical text of that work, the answer is no, I am not. Go read The Incunable. There are copies of the first and second edition, both at the Correa and in the Marciana. Now, it had a fair amount of success in the 15th century. 
because it's basically a text of canon law. Uh, you've got a first edition, possibly Padua, one of those things that has to be sorted out. Then uh, four editions in Venice, two in the end in Padua, but also in Cologne, Krakow, Paris, Speyer. In the 16th century, so it's one of those texts that completely drops off the radar. There are no reprintings in the 16th, nor in any other century. And so, if you want to read it, go read the Incunable. There are plenty of copies around. Now, the edition that interests us, as you can see, because I've marked it in red, is the Venice edition, printed by Johannes de Colonia and Johannes Manthen in 1474. There's a bit more technical detail. It was printed on a one-pool press, i.e. the primitive press, which uh, basically managed to do only one half of a sheet at a time, or in this particular interest, the sheets were cut in half before printing. Is this information of any interest or value? No, but I just want to annoy Frank Eisman. Falk Eisman. <laughs> It contains 152 leaves. That adds up to 38 sheets in chancery. It's a chancery size sheet. It's a quarto format. You have a collational formula, uh, obviously being unsigned sheets. These are slightly irregular in the, that various repertories assign different formulae. This one is from the Bodleian Library Catalog, seems reasonably sensible. You can see that these are quite large gatherings, and it is not a rare book. There are 100 copies in ISTC, which means that various other copies are still marking around and haven't been recorded. Now, the copy I'm interested in here is at Boston Public Library. Now I'm talking about not Boston, not the real Boston, which is in England and has a lovely library in the Church Tower. I'm talking about its American counterpart and imitation, which houses various universities and other things. And uh, it is a copy that is there, press mark Q4048. Brief description, well, it's a modern binding, but it's got manuscript guards, rubrication, one illuminated letter. How did I find this particular book? Here are the guards. Well, there's this thing called the internet. And if you go into it, there are people who do things called blogs, in which they talk about what they're interested in. Most of them are about cats. Then you have cookery. And then you have various other things. But there are people who do nice incunabula I've met. My personal feeling is get a life. But, you know, you're free to do what you want. Anyway, the thing I'm going to show you popped up in a blog, actually a rather good blog, conducted by the curator of rare books at Boston Public Library, Jay Moschella. And I want to express my thanks to him for all the help he's given me with this particular paper, sending me uh, images and telling me about the book. Because I confess I haven't seen the book, which is a heinous scene, a sin from my point of view, but I was in Boston in the spring and the library was closed. They were moving all their incunabula was the excuse, right? So, sorry about that. I've not actually seen the book I'm talking about, which is not something that normally happens. Right, it has guards, rather nice parchment guards, uh, made up from uh, this medieval manuscript. It's some sort of text of a statute or something. I haven't quite identified it here, as yet. Then we have the first leaf of this incunable. Uh, and as you can see, it has been rubricated in red and blue quite skillfully. So here we have the beginning of the table at the beginning of the text. And here I want to just open a very brief parenthesis about rubrication, i.e. which derives, as we all know, from the Latin ruba, i.e. to write in red. And, of course, rubrication is one of those things that falls between several different stools because nobody's interested in it. Uh, paleographers say, okay, it's decoration. We don't deal with decoration. 
art historians say, no, they do it with a pen. We don't do it, but also because there are no pictures. Bibliographers say, we don't deal with it because it's added after it's printed, and our cut-off point is when it leaves the shop. People doing binding, Nicholas, where are you? They say, we don't do a deal with rubrication because it's inside the book and we never open the book to see what it actually contains. And so on and so forth. It's actually quite important, rubrication. Now, our book also contains one illuminated letter. Here you can see it a bit better. It's at the beginning of the text. I've consulted with Lillian Armstrong, to whom we all bow in these matters, and she tells me that it's probably Venice area, what they would call Roverella style. I related to the Roverella Decretum Graziani, which is now in Ferrara, 1474, and it's a style of decoration entirely compatible with Venice and the Veneto. And so we're quite happy about that. And inside, as well as rubrication, we also have rather more elaborate decorated letters done by our rubricator in that he's using three colors here. Note there's a change, red, blue, and lavender. That's the third cover. Now, careful, there are two slightly different operations here. One is being done by pen. All that lavender is being done by pen by what we call a flourisher, somebody who's doing all these flourishes or svolazzi. Then we have the red and the blue. Where it's thick, it's probably been filled in with a very, very fine brush. So there's quite a lot of work here, and this work has a cost. So here's the colophon of our book. We're almost at the end of it. So you've got the name of the author, the printers, the date. It was a Friday, if anybody's interested, the 25th of March in 1474. Here with the final leaf of the copy, in which Boston Public Library has printed from a large notice from their internal journal describing the book, and there's something scribbled at the bottom there. Can you just see it? Just on the very last leaf, there's something scribbled on the bottom. Ah, that looks interesting. That looks very interesting. Oh, let's transcribe it. Una litra d'oro sol di one. 175 litre trattezzate sol di three denari six. Paragraphy 2035 sol di four. Let's translate that. One illuminated letter, one soldo. One 175 decorated letters three soldi and six denari. I, those are those more elaborate letters I showed you with all the uh, flourishing. 2,035 uh, pilcrows. Pilcrows are paragraph signs. That's the correct name in English. Rather odd, but that's what they're called, pilcrows. Four soldis. Now, that adds up to eight soldi and six denari, or if we're going to break it down, 102 denari. The denaro is a coin we haven't mentioned yet. So let's just go and talk about Venetian money. It's been mentioned, but not quite everything so far. Above we have, at the top of the scale, the super money in gold. Christina showed us a few. One ducat, a ducat is six lira, four soldi, or 124 soldi. Everybody will remember Shylock, my ducats, my daughter, my daughter, my ducats. We don't know how much daughters cost, but probably being Venice, you can get a price. One lira is 20 soldi, one soldo is 12 denari. Of course, those people who in England remember pre-decimal, or pounds, shillings, and pence up to 1973, or even Italians who've been there for a long time, i.e. those Italians who next year will all get thrown out, uh, will remember that in England, up to decimal currency in 1973, a pound was 20 shillings, and a shilling was 12 pence, because the Venetian monetary reform introduced in 1471 by Niccolò Tron was imitated everywhere else in Europe, even after it had disappeared in Venice itself. So that is the breakdown of the money. Now, 
In the Zornale, this book costs one lira and ten soldi, or thirty soldi. It was sold, for example, on the 8th of January, 1487. You can see the entry there. It's the uh, fourth entry on that particular day. So above it, we have Quaestio di Gentile, Gentile da Fabriano, his commentary on Navicenna, and a Fior di Virtù. They are sold together, one copy each, for one a lira. Then we have a Sermo de Roberto, that's the big ink stain. That is Roberto Caracciolo. That's selling for two lire and ten soldi. We have Francesco della Piazza. That's our author. That's the Restitutio. And that is selling for one lire and ten soldi. Underneath, we have the Tabula Alfonsi. That's selling for one lire and five soldi. And then another Sermo de Roberto. Now, one thing Christine and myself are doing is every time we have a sale, we identify a probable addition, we break it down, and we see how much it costs per sheet of paper. This is a good way of comparing them, also because our main cost in Renaissance books is paper. So this is a 9.7 denari per sheet. Christina will tell you that's medium high in terms of our cost. Right, let's start wrapping things up. Summary of costs. I'm going to put them all in denari. If you want to work out in the soldi, you divide by 12. Purchase of book, 360 denari. Illumination rubrication, 102 denari. Binding, difficult to estimate binding, but we do have binding costs in the Zornale very occasionally. When books are sold as bound, we tend to, there tends to be about 70% markup on what the unbound copy is. So I'm going to stick that in as an estimate, and I'm going to assume it's a fairly robust Venetian binding, leather, wooden boards, so I'm, so I'm going to put that as 252 denari. You can see how the extras have kicked in on our Ryanair book. Right? The original cost was 360, but by the time we add in our extras, it's up to 714, or a fraction sort of three lire. Now, you can go back to Christina's thing and see that three lire is quite a sum of money at the time. All right? So, let's draw our conclusions. First of all, Hand finishing makes books expensive without considering binding or other possible costs. Hand finishing is also something we can do without because you can take it out of the system. All the printers have to do is to start putting in symbols, woodcut letters and so on. Once they start doing that, and of course, rubrication disappears except in an amateurish fashion, more or less once we're into the 1480s, we're saving 13% on the cost of our, this particular book if we take out the rubrication and the illumination. Now, this is a very important element in what book costs are going to become in the rest of the 15th century and into the 16th century because as Ryanair habitual users will tell you, if you don't click on the extras, the book or the flight stays quite cheap. Thank you very much. ci rendiamo conto appunto che la questione dei prezzi non è una questione semplice, è una questione in cui le implicazioni e le complicazioni vengono sempre fuori, rimanendo sempre su Ryanair, poi c'è la questione dei trasporti, questi sono prezzi veneziani e poi i libri si muovono e i libri vanno in giro e questo comporta altri costi, altri investimenti, per cui insomma la questione mh, diciamo, tende a essere parecchio uh, complicata, e, ma comunque meritevole mh, certamente di essere considerata.